Hello and good afternoon friends, welcome to this EC Edusit live lecture. Uh, for all the students of the computer sciences, we would like to tell you all that today we would be talking on wireless multimedia networking. And for this very discussion on the topic, we have once again with us in our studios, uh, Dr. Advitya Sinha. Dr. Advitya Sinha uh, is an assistant professor in uh, Department of Computer Sciences in one of the leading institutions. Um, Dr. Advitya Sinha has uh, immense knowledge as well as the experience. So dear friends, let's welcome our guest, Dr. Advitya Sinha and let's try to understand more and more about uh, wireless multimedia networking. Hello ma'am, welcome Thank to the Edusit lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, hello viewers, today we are going to discuss on wireless multimedia networking. We will be discussing on its several aspects of uh, design challenges, uh, issues. Of overall we will uh, know that what significance does multimedia networking play in our day to day life. So in broad way uh, what we are going to study the flow of the topics are like first we will introduce the wireless multimedia networking. Uh, its associated challenges and applications, what are the recent trend demands, then the network categorization, uh, then of course we will come across the cellular architecture which is less architecture more a standard these days to support multimedia content over the web. Then uh, the design issues of course different challenges associated with the radio technology, spectrum usage, uh, handoff, uh, then channel reservation schemes etc. Handoff management being a very critical issue along with quality of service will be discussed. Then uh, given so many constraints uh, for supporting multimedia over the web, uh, what are the different channel capacity improvement techniques that we have? by splitting or sectoring the cells or controlling power, zoning, etc. Also, we will conclude our lecture uh, with energy harvesting that is the different scavenging mechanisms that are available to recharge the battery of uh, the handheld mul multimedia devices. Now, multimedia is itself a big domain as wireless network is. In wireless network is what? It, it is a result of advanced nano and micro technologies in electronic uh, field that has high speed processors and support fast communication capabilities. And as the uh, days are going, uh, technologies are becoming more advanced as a result of which chip size is becoming smaller and smaller thereby uh, providing uh, like portability to it. And as portability is concerned, we, are, we can see that our uh, telephones or whatever our mobile phones or tablets, they are getting reduced in size or they are getting uh, much lighter in weight, etc. And this is uh, again as a result of final fabrication of circuit designs that the electronic experts are doing these days. And uh, a very powerful mechanism that wireless networking are supporting is the support for user mobility. The users may be on a, a relative uh, mobile platform or they might be traveling in a high speed vehicle or uh, train or etc. So uh, in that case also communication does not break up and wireless networking has great capabilities in supporting such uh, communications. And these days they are also becoming pervasive. Pervasive means that we do not know that they are in the environment uh, but they are getting embedded in our daily lives like wireless metering, intelligent homing, intelligent lighting in office environments, etc. Even these days we have uh, electronic punching facilities in our offices, etc. And uh, the very important aspect is with all these upgraded technology, this price is uh, exponentially going down, which is a very good uh, thing for uh, us as customers. So all these uh, uh, good things into one package when they are uh, equipped with multimedia contents then we get a next generation technology. Now what this multimedia is, whenever multimedia comes to our mind it is like a different uh, type of text, it can be scalar 
uh, that is uh, maybe uh, only one type of data. Data can be in form of numeric, alphabet or alphanumeric or any special characters, etc. Or it can be a set of such characters in form of vectors or arrays. Now, if we increase the dimension a little higher, uh, we can get a two dimensional arrangement of textual data and it is better known as matrix data. And this way we can go even higher uh, and multimedia contents are like uh, as much as high in dimension we go, we get a richer uh, uh, feel of multimedia content. Also multimedia includes uh, audio clips and uh, the voice, what is the difference between voice and audio? Voice is like an ongoing communication, there can be voices of different individuals. Audio likes uh, small audio clips of few minutes or so. Then we have images, the still pictures, also video, uh, they are also part of multimedia, 3D uh, animations, 2D, 3D animations and uh, now we, we are having like 4D animations, uh, some of the movie multiplex they are supporting 10DX. So uh, animation is also a very crucial part uh, of multimedia. Also we have interactive contents, now interactive contents are like uh, if you are going to shopping mall and we have to find out some particular shop, we don't know where it is, its location, as the malls are uh, very huge. So what we do, we go to the shopping kiosk and we enter our desired uh, query in a very interactive manner and we get the results accordingly. So this is a type of interactive uh, window that multimedia offers. Similarly, we can have other examples like uh, say uh, multimedia gaming, interactive uh, portals and games are also there uh, so that the players can choose their own preference levels, etc. And obviously, as the nature of multimedia content is considered, we need a very high speed and sophisticated uh, uh, devices or electronic platform and uh, this is uh, very fortunately offered by the wireless networking with the capability, additional capability of being portable and lightweight. So when this uh, two technologies merge, the confluence of these two technologies gives us a very uh, advanced next generation multimedia networking. And it is what it is basically intelligent networking over the wireless domain that has vast applications. And multimedia in its form with the help of wireless capabilities can be accessed anywhere in any form and at any time. Now what are the different challenges that are associated with it? The first is uh, the radio aspect. The radio as we know that it is a uh, very constrained uh, piece of uh, uh, resource that we have. So the first thing is how to assign channel so that all the users uh, who uh, require the channel for uh, transferring its contents can get a fair usage out of it. So channel assignment is very important, then reservation policies uh, that prefers a particular set of users or some business commercials etc. They give a preferential treatment to it. The bandwidth utilization uh, is also again another important criteria along with keeping in mind that we are on the wireless domain, so wireless impediments are all, always there, the pro propagation mechanisms, if it goes uncontrolled, we know that uh, it can hamper our ongoing communication uh, through scattering or reflection or uh, diffraction impacts. The next is networking as aspect. The first thing is mobility management. Obviously the uh, people who are having these multimedia handheld devices, they are not tend to like statically sitting on a uh, particular place. They are often mobile going to office or hanging out with friends or maybe on a high speed vehicle. So mobility is a very important issue here that has to be addressed and how to address this with the help of uh, a good routing technologies good in the sense they has to be uh, very intelligent enough to route uh, the information in such a manner that it is reliably reached to its intended destination along with that the delay should also be minimized. Next is traffic management. 
we have to be very concerned about designing. Uh, uh, this is a very important design challenge because there can be congestion in the network and due to congestion uh, we can have many of our packets lost in, colli uh, in collision etc. So traffic management is a very important policy and this can be uh, carried out with the help of packet scheduling techniques when a particular set of packets from uh, uh, some group of nodes should be sent so that collision uh, probability is reduced to its minimum. Now, service quality or rather we can say quality of service QoS uh, parameter, this is the core challenging area of uh, multimedia. Uh, the two things that are very important over here is ensuring a connection level QoS and ensuring an application or a packet level QoS is very important that uh, decides that what type of multimedia uh, experience that we are going to get. There are some other factors as well, uh, energy efficiency, uh, whether our handheld devices are able to support uh, the energy technologies, whatever is required in compatibility with the multimedia technologies that we wish to uh, see on our screen. Obviously security is again a very common but a very important aspect and hardware and software robustness. The hardware and software uh, compatibility also plays a very important role for the multimedia uh, content to play on our devices. Now as a matter of fact, uh, the 3G systems that we have these days, the target transmission rate for the static mobile users is 2 Mbps and for high mobile users it has been recorded up to uh, 144 Kbps. Now uh, mobile with the word mobile we know that the person or the object is mobile with respect to time or place, right? But when we are saying static mobile user, it means that uh, the object is static relatively to the platform that is associated, the wireless platform. Now the different multimedia applications, the generic applications that comes to our mind as soon as we uh, listen this word uh, multimedia. The first is information system, all the information kiosk comes under this category. First being electronic publication, uh, publication or the publishing house uh, these days. Then online catalogs, uh, any online e-portals, shopping portals, uh, they have their uh, catalogs in form of multimedia. Then the patient monitoring system, remote, uh, remotely the patient monitoring systems can be uh, there. Uh, there are different chaos, multimedia supported chaos for that also, uh, so, so as to monitor the uh, health related issues of uh, senior citizens uh, who are staying alone in their homes. Then obviously shopping mall navigation that we just discussed now. Now uh, there is another aspect of multimedia that is remote representation. Remote representation means uh, video conferencing is a part of it. Uh, or the distance learning as we are uh, just right now we are engaged into it. The remote actions, remote actions or say remote, uh, robot surveillance that is there in uh, industrial uh, applications etc. Or any other uh, monitoring area where humans cannot intervene uh, more often. And yes, uh, virtual reality, virtual reality uh, mostly useful for designing games and uh, for uh, designing hardware simulation etc. That is simulation is what it is like non-existing environment is being created so that uh, even before it, it is its practical implementation a person can uh, check out the programmer in the sense they can check out what are the drawbacks of the system etc. What are the uh, different uh, uh, aspects that could be improved so as to get a trade off between cost and service. And obviously entertainment, entertainment uh, apart from uh, digital television what else we have, we have video on demand on television itself that if we uh, subscribe to some uh, service packs we can uh, see or we, uh, whatever movies or whatever songs we want to hear we can uh, just request it on demand it will be played to us. Then we have interactive portals and interactive games. Now these are very general applications of multimedia wireless networks. Now what are the recent trends that these days going on? 
with uh, the use of sensors, there are tremendous number of applications we have. Let us see some of them. First is multimedia surveillance sensor network. Now, these are mostly used by um, say the defense application personals, the defense personals can use them to secure national borders or intruders, uh, maybe at uh, night or maybe at some uh, working hours when uh, they do not have uh, much supporting uh, facilities to look upon. Also this can be, the surveillance can be useful for personal uh, or public events as well, like some functions are going on at large scale then just to uh, have a surveillance of if everything is okay or there is some security breach or not this can be uh, done. Next is traffic congestion avoidance. Traffic can be avoided with the help of uh, video sensing uh, and again when video is there we know that uh, video, audio, images, uh, etc. everything they are what they are related to multimedia. They are all multimedia content. So, with the help of multimedia sensors and wireless systems, what we uh, what we can do is uh, we can monitor the traffic in uh, cities and highways and provide traffic routing advice that okay in some places we have a certain level of congestion uh, which means that that route or that junction should be avoided to save time etc. Also it helps a lot in automated parking assistance that uh, these days parking is a very uh, important issue to be concerned of. The in, uh, industrial process uh, control obviously that uh, enhances certain automated op um, actions with the help of visual inspections, etc. Advanced healthcare delivery. Here what happens as uh, in the figure we can see that a patient can carry the sensors, they are known as wearable devices. Uh, they can be uh, weird from outside or sometimes they are embedded inside the skin of the uh, patient according to the criticality of the situation. Like if uh, say a person is uh, carrying a stick, an old man is carrying a stick, then there can be a wearable fall detector uh, embedded into it so that uh, as soon as the stick falls, the, uh, uh, the people or the caring person who are there uh, in the intermediate uh, surrounding, in the inter, uh, they can just come for help and etc. Also we can have a, a surveillance, a monitoring for those who are like bed restrained or etc. So if they uh, do a certain kind of movement will be able to notify it. This can be done with the help of uh, say location communication gateway. Location communication gateway uh, it generally functions uh, with the help of uh, GPS that is will be able to know the exact location of the patient movement or any uh, sort of malfunctioning of our own systems etc. And all this information can be shared to other uh, systems via cloud services or the web. Also we can have vision based monitoring, remote home surveillance associated with the wireless service. Now the network categorization. Now categorizations can be done on different classes on the basis of uh, a particular class that we have considered here that on the basis of delay and loss performance in multimedia applications we have two broad categories. The real time wireless networks that supports multimedia and the non real time applications. Now what are real time applications? Uh, what are the constraints associated with such applications? The first is they cannot tolerate large delays. And what they are, uh, they uh, cannot also tolerate the delay variation because real time when we are uh, speaking of something that is a real time that is on the fly. So what we need or what we uh, assure of that we can tolerate some uh, losses of some frames. Say we are showing a video or a music on screen. So we can just uh, if there are some glitches we can uh, redundantly put some other videos to cover up. But we cannot. Uh, uh, tolerate the delays or if the delays are coming in variation okay then uh, what else uh, the, obviously there is a screen uh, there is a very stringent timing constraint that within this time if the frames are not coming then it's like the whole video or the audio clip gets erroneous some examples could be video conferencing 
the telephone calls etc we if we uh, experience some kind of problem in the conferencing part or say uh, while we are speaking to our friends or family uh, then what we do we simply disconnect the call and try to reconnect again so the uh, this this type of glitches delays are not uh, recommendable recommendable for uh, the real time applications now uh, what are the modern video compression techniques that we have to eradicate such error in communication the first is video redundancy coding and the second is reference picture selection now these are the techniques that provides uh, error robustness and with the help of this uh, some some error to some extent we can uh, tolerate when speaking of the real time applications uh, the loss of frames and uh to some extent errors so we can say that the loss performance is uh, relaxed in case of the real time applications but delays are not covered but if we come to uh, the non real uh, real time domain what happens that they can tolerate rel relatively larger delays they are not concerned about the delays but whatever information that get uh, to the uh, destination it has to be completely flawless there is no error there should not be any room for error of any kind so here uh, what are the different um, applications we have is telnet service ftp email etc here uh, information is more important and uh, the guarantee of timely data delivery is not that important such applications are also known as elastic applications because they can stretch themselves as the delay increases the irrespective uh, of the delay or the delay variation the performance uh, does not degrade so this is the categorization that is based on the delay and loss performance of the applications multimedia applications now let's see according to another type of categorization we have another class uh, and this is what uh, this is done on the basis of Mm, cell size the frequency band the wireless channel characteristics uh, that are there uh, for multimedia applications support the first is wireless lans and wireless wans lan is a local area network wan is wide area network now these are the terminologies generally associated with the wired uh, domain in wireless what happens wireless lans often cover relatively smaller geographical area they um, since they cover a very small area so they have a very restricted area to deal with the speed is normally for such uh, applications the data rate the speed is very high and the supporting uh, feature is that the setup where wiring is difficult or impractical such wireless lans are very very suitable like wifi etc Now, there are two types of application uh, applications or say the arch architect supporting architectures that we have under this category the first is uh, infrastructure based another is ad hoc based that is ad hoc means there is no infrastructure infrastructure based means there is always a central coordinator to uh, look upon the services is being properly delivered or not the management of resources security issues accessing issues everything in ad hoc what happens the services are all together uh, they are very distributed kind so no one is taking care of it but yet there are uh, whatever objects the entities that are uh, deployed in the scenario they are all uh, doing their own role and they act as uh, the coordinators along with uh, the distributed agents they are based on packet switched random access protocols what it means it means that whenever we have we are uh, say sending uh, some packets over wireless lans what we do that the message to be transferred is being uh, subdivided into small packets now these packets have ids have uh, sequence numbers and some other header and trailer informations associated with them so that when uh, they reach to the destination they can be uh, resequenced and put into a particular order in whatever order it was actually framed and when they are uh, from the source when these uh, packets are uh, uh, delivered into the web what it does it takes different paths 
to uh, reach the destination. Some of the paths can be longer, some may be shorter, some packets may get uh, corrupted, etc. Some, in some way, it can also happen that um, redundant copies of the same packet, that is a packet with uh, having the same sequence number is being received. So, uh, this type of packet switch networks uh, is um, mandatorily used with uh, Wi-Fi, etc. I mean the wireless LANs. And so, we can understand that routing is a very important constraint here. The packets has to be routed very efficiently. Then we have wireless WANs. Now, wireless WANs are just opposite. Uh, they cover large geographical area and since again they cover large geography, uh, geography they have larger services to maintain. So, the data rate is uh, it tends to be lower. Now, the architecture type that uh, it supports is the cellular uh, networking, uh, PCS personal communication system, mobile uh, data radio systems okay. and the different circuit switching here we do not use packet switched, here we used rather circuit switched dedicated uh, lines and some of the protocols are access protocols, they are FDMA, TDMA, uh, CDMA etc. The, these uh, networks, these architectures are mainly infrastructure based that is we always have a central coordinator to look upon the resource management, security issues, etc. And the circuit or the channel allocation uh, policies are generally made by this coordinator and they are often uh, priority based or they also cannot be uh, based on priority basis, uh, different levels of preferences can also be there. And this uh, altogether helps in utilization of network resources. So, uh, next we will study about other different aspects of multimedia uh, networking uh, for this session. Thank you. Welcome back. Now we will study about the cellular architecture. Now what does the cellular concept is? Let us see. Now here the architecture provides an efficient utilization of the radio spectrum. Now this is done with the help of uh, polygonal uh, shaped clusters uh, and the polygonal shaped clusters are what they are composed of a number of cells. Uh, those are in form of hexagon. Now, why hexagon? Because hexagon uh, sh is a shape that is very much close to uh, circular shape because uh, uh, in a very, uh, uh, very roughly speaking whatever uh, the radio coverage of the transmitter or the receiver is, we take it in form of circular coverage. So, hexagon is uh, very much uh, it resembles the circular uh, coverage. What else? that it can efficiently cover a two dimensional region without overlaps because as far as circles are considered uh, we cannot uh, completely cover a area given to us our region of interest without being overlapping. Overlap means that we are wasting the uh, network resources, but if we are using a head, uh, the hexagon cells arrangement as you can see in the figure that there is a very compact packing, the layout is very compact there is no room for any overlaps that is we are not wasting the resources yet without wasting our um, radio resources what we are doing we are efficiently covering the entire region of interest. And we assume that our hexagonal uh, cells are all uniform, uniform in the way is that uh, they have same radius identical radius throughout. What else? Each cell uh, or uh, the, in, the, the, in the cellular concept what happens? A base station is located at the center of each cell covering uh, the number of mobile terminals that moves from one cell to another. Now, base station maintains two types of channels for communication with the mobile uh, terminals. The first is uplink 
and the next second is downlink. In uplink what happens? The mobile terminals are allowed to communicate with the base station and downlink means the base station passes on some query to the mobile terminals. Now often uh, uh, what happens is uplink is like a peer to peer communication because the mobile terminals are communicating to the base station so they know that uh, with whom uh, they have to communicate they have a proper channel, proper address, uh, proper direction to which their packets has to be sent. Uh, but when downlink is considered, the uh, this base station might not be aware of the particular device, the electronic device, the electronic uh, mobile device to communicate with. But it is very sure that they, it has to uh, access a particular area. So what it does is it will um, flood the query in that particular area with the help of directional antennas, etc. Now. The cellular structure encourages resource utilization with the help of frequency reuse. Now what is reuse? Uh, reuse is what? That we are uh, using the same frequency across different cells in such a manner that no two adjacent cells are using the same frequency. You can see in the figure um, that uh, none of the cells the adjacent cells, adjacent cells means those cells that are sharing their boundaries with each other. None of such cells are having same frequency because uh, had they shared the uh, frequency, what will happen? There will be a co-channel interference. So just to avoid it, what we do is we use uh, make uh, a use of the uh, a very safe distance which is uh, termed as a reuse distance. This reuse distance is a predetermined network parameter that is computed in advance and it avoids helps in avoiding the frequency interference particularly co-channel interference. Now on uh, what concept this cellular uh, architecture is based? It is based on this particular fact that uh, signal strength of electromagnetic wave gets attenuated with distance. It means that if uh, our cells are using the same frequency beyond a distance if they are using it then it is safely the communications can go on without interfering each other. So this uh, reuse distance is very important parameter it has to be maintained it is like a backbone uh, for cellular architecture. Now a cluster is what it is a group of cells so earlier we told that the cluster in case of cellular architecture is of polygonal shape and what happens uh, such spectrum uh, it distributes the entire radio spectrum it divides it into channel that uh, in the in this case in the figure at, as it can it is uh, apparently shown that there are seven uh, channels the, the the main radio spectrum is divided into and it's allotted in a manner that none of the adjacent cells are having the same frequency now how to calculate the cluster size cluster size means um, the total number of cells in a cluster so here the cluster size is what uh, the same number as the uh, number of channels we have. We, if we have 7 channels, uh, the cluster size is taken as to be 7. Now how this number uh, we can find it out? We can do it with the help of this formula uh, n is equal to i square plus j square plus ij. Now here ij is no special uh, parameters, they are just non-negative integers. You can go on putting values and you will get that 7 is uh, one of them. Uh, and n equal to 7 is considered to be a standard arrangement of the cellular architecture. <coughs> now as the entire spectrum allotted to the cluster is evenly distributed among cells as we have already seen, now what are, what are the advantages that we are getting here? The number of users supported in a particular region of interest is uh, uh, it, went, it goes high and what we are doing a frequency reuse so we are in a very efficient, efficient manner we are uh, uh, utilizing the bandwidth resource. Now if we do a simple geometry over here we can see that uh, our cells are what they are uniform they have uh, same radius throughout ok. Now if we split the hexagon shape into 6 parts ok by intersecting lines what we can see that uh, it's it's basically 360 degree angle and we divided it by 6 we get what we get each sector to be a 60 degree 
figure okay now if we uh, see the figure and magnify uh, the triangle abc we can nomenclature it as ac is our reuse distance and that is uh, denoted by capital d ab is intercell distance the, the, the distance between uh, any two cells that is uh, uh, given by d small d and bc uh, if uh, we carefully observe it's basically twice the distance or uh, uh, twice the intercellular distance so it's twice twice of small d with uh, some calculations we can uh, uh, get to this um, results that uh, the intercellular distance is product of root 3 and the radius of the hexagon and the reuse distance is a product of root 21 and uh, the uh, radius of the hexagon. And also very important parameter over here is d by r it is known as the channel reuse ratio. Now uh, how this formulas are coming out let us see very simple geometry over here again uh, if you want to prove uh, that our uh, small d that is the intercellular distance uh, is given by this formula then we can see that if we take two cells and arrange them in a we have a linear arrangement of them and um, say angle x m m and x m and that is of uh, 60 degree angle if we bisect it using a bisector we get n x y and m x y as 30 degrees with, some, uh, with uh, the trigonometry uh, applying trigonometry over here cos 30 degrees will give you uh, d by 2 by r okay evidently from the figure and finally we can uh, simplify above and we get the value of intercellular distance as root 3 r next is how to calculate the channel uh, uh, the parameter d now what is it as in the earlier uh, slide we have shown this arrangement of three clusters in one we are just magnified uh, form of abc we are taking okay now we are applying again trigonometry over here and we can find that d is equal to root 21 r and for uh, coming to this conclusion what we do we will use the results that we have got in equations 1 and 2 now if you see that uh, root 21 is what root 21 is uh, 3 multiplied by 7 and 7 is what 7 is the value of n the cluster size so the cluster size largely uh, determines the parameter d we have to keep this thing in concern now as we already uh, it has been discussed that n equal to 7 is a very standard model uh, when cellular architecture is considered now it can be done using free uh, the frequency assignment can be fixed or it can be dynamic if it is fixed it means that certain frequencies are predetermined uh, it's predetermined uh, that uh, some certain cells set of cells are to be given those frequencies and the drawback is that if we have some hotspot areas like uh, some small pockets of uh, regions who, are, who demand uh, more energy, more uh, communication, etc., then in that case, we, it will be difficult for supporting the heavy traffic load. So, fixed uh, frequency assignment is uh, not a very successful one. Uh, due to which we move to the dynamic frequency assignment here what happens the base station chooses uh, the frequency depending upon the uh, frequency reuse parameters and etc and it helps uh, for supporting um, better traffic uh, management etc and the assignment here can be based on uh, the interference measurement now what are the design issues that we have to uh, deal with the first is radio technology we have already discussed it uh, now we are revisiting those topics in detail that uh, what exactly radio technology has to do with the spectrum efficiency the first thing is uh, the applications with high rate traffic because whenever we are speaking uh, when you are de dealing with multimedia uh, networks 
multimedia content, uh, there is a high burst of traffic, they are generally variable and uh, often at some point of time uh, there may be burst of traffic coming and then uh, the traffic intensity might get reduced. So, there is a variation in the um, transmission as well as delay. Next is there is a demand for high quality, so quality of service has to be maintained. And how the technological development uh, requirement is fulfilled? It can be done using radio inter uh, interface access technologies. It helps to maximize the system capacity, that is system capacity means total number of effective users that can be supported in each cell and it minimizes uh, the interference among users. It has to keep track of the um, uh, predefined uh, parameters, the channel reuse ratio, uh, the parameter D, etc. Initially, how many uh, in how many uh, ways we can divide the channel, the spectrum into so that uh, more and more number of users can be supported. Then uh, to tackle asymmetric data rates, because data rates um, as multimedia is concerned will not be uniform for sure, and provide uh, bandwidth on demand, whenever there is a bandwidth demand, uh, there is a gust of traffic, uh, the bandwidth uh, can be allotted, otherwise it can be uh, like taken back. Next is radio transmission technology, what type of transmission technology can be used? Now when transmission is considered, we have to uh, think about the modulation technique, how the signals have to be modulated, how they will be encoded and transmitted and then back uh, uh, decoded back. So the encoding, uh, encapsulation and uh, equalization, channel equalization techniques are important. Um, then we should have adaptive and smart antennas with us. Uh, so that uh, if we require the data to be sent in a particular direction or a particular region, we can we should be able to do that uh, along with a high QoS with reasonable complexity. The complexity, uh, the computation complexity or the transmission complexity should not be very high that it compensates with the quality of service. And obviously management of resources and here the resource means the channel assignment. Next is handoff and mobility issues. There are two uh, results, two important results as uh, user mobility is concerned. The first is handoff management. That, okay, the user is mobile, but it's not going out of the network. It's within the network, but since we know that our network is clustered into so many uh, clusters and the cluster is again into cells. So if the user is mobile, uh, and it's moving from the boundary of one cell to another, but it remains in the coverage of the same network. Then what happens? Uh, we often uh, get a small disturbance in our ongoing call. This is called handoff. So handoff has to be managed uh, and what the main issues in this respect are the handoff detection, when actually the object, the moving object is going to detect handoff. Uh, and what type of radio link has to be transferred, what type of bandwidth requirement is there for that particular user. Uh, and also if uh, it has some preference level etc., then uh, the channel assignment will be given in that manner. Next is roaming management. Now if the mobile user is going out of the network, that as for example we cross the state boundaries, we are often uh, intimated with a welcome message that okay you are welcome from uh, MTNL to now you, are, you have entered a BSNL network like that. So here roaming occurs whenever there is uh, a mobile terminal who are crossing the coverage area of one network to another. So it, it is a uh, more complicated uh, management is required over here and we need security and user registration etc. And very important is the location update, but from which location the call has to be shifted to uh, the next potential location. Now we have channel assignment issues. Channel can be assignment uh, to the users in, a, in two different ways. It can be a dynamic assignment or it can be a static assignment. Dynamic assignment is what the channels are uh, not permanently given to any cell. 
it is not attacked with a particular cell. The channels are temporarily uh, assigned from a common resource pool, that there is a resource sharing pool and whenever the users are demanding the request for it and uh, the uh, channel, particular channel or a particular set of channels can be provided to the user on a time basis. Next the performance in uh, high traffic scenario results that is uh, there can be a very frequent user mobility or uh, there can be a frequent demand or uh, shifting of uh, resources from say the user want to hear some music or some video or um, uh, on this, uh, also they want to do some uh, editing part on text files etc. So, for this what happens? It requires frequent borrowing of adjacent channels and for this what again we have to compute the reuse parameter. So, it has to be done and what else reassignment of the channels accordingly. According to what? According to the channel reuse parameter, uh, the reuse ratio etc. Uh, the number of constraints we have on the number of total number of channels, the cluster size etc. All these have to be kept in our mind. Now, the second is uh, static channel allocation. Unlike dynamic channel allocation in static uh, the user or uh, the particular cell is permanently tagged uh, with a set of channels. Now, here the complexity obviously when there is a static arrangement uh, the complexity is very low uh, and since the complexity is low it is easy to deploy and many wireless systems are there who still uh, prefer with the help of uh, the simplicity of uh, SCA that is static channel assignment, they prefer such assignments. But the dynamic channel assignments are more successful these days for imparting uh, multimedia contents on the web on demand. Now the last is uh, preferential treatment strategies. Now how do how the uh, obviously the users are coming with preferences. There can be business people with business profiles, there can be uh, people with student profiles or uh, for simple uh, entertainment purpose uh, people can be logging on to the web and, and they require access to multimedia content. So there are uh, different levels of preferences. Now how to deal with uh, such preferences requires some strategies to be followed. The first is uh, hand off queue. Here what happens? Large buffers are uh, used for accommodating the incoming requests. As large number of users and they uh, tend to request for uh, some multimedia, their request is simply buffered. And as uh, uh, they are buffered, they get queued up into uh, some systems. Now this queuing, uh, whenever queuing system is there, we have to uh, apply some scheduling techniques. Now all the calls, new or say handoff calls, new calls means that the calls that are uh, coming to the system, uh, at, say right at this point of time, or there can be some calls that are being handed over, there is some on ongoing call, but they have to be handed over from one cell to another owing to uh, user mobility. So, resource management again has to be applied on the queuing part, the scheduling part and obviously what type of buffering is required. Now, the next is GERD channels. Here what happens, we do not uh, make use of queuing uh, mechanisms, rather we reserve uh, some channels as GERD channels and whenever user with uh, high potential or high preferences say maybe they have paid a lot of money uh, to access uh, the services, such users come, uh, they are uh, directly put into the GERD channels. Now in GERD channels what happens as they come, uh, enters the system, they offer the services right at that point of time without any delay. There are fixed GC schemes and obviously we have uh, dynamic GC schemes according to say uh, there might be uh, some new calls, so, uh, those are highly preferred uh, over the handover call. So that way they can be rearranged on the GERD channels or the non-GERD channels. 
Now we come to what is handoff management. Now this is a process of uh, changing the channel of ongoing call associated with current connection. That is if uh, the user is mobile or there is uh, less uh, uh, potential with the current ongoing communication in the cell, then what happens? Uh, the call can be shifted from one cell to another and uh, this process, this phenomena is uh, better known as handoff. This is generally initiated by two important uh, uh, features. The first is uh, when a object crosses a cell boundary and the second is if there is a deterioration in the quality of signal in the current uh, channel that is in the current cell. The handoff is then divided into two parts, the hard handoff and the soft handoff. Hard handoff means as the name goes a break before MEC strategy. It means that uh, whenever there is a uh, handoff, handoff is detected uh, due to mobility or whatsoever, what happens? First the old connection, the old channels, channel is broken and then a new request is uh, placed to the next potential base station that yes I need a channel to uh, put my call uh, on uh, like ongoing call should go on progress. So for that then we ask for the uh, channel to get alerted. So it is a break before make. Now similarly we have soft handoffs and they are uh, uh, divided into two parts the multi-way soft handoffs and the software handoffs and hard handoffs can be intracell uh, or the intercell handoffs. Now what is the criticality associated with handoff management is uh, the adjacent cells <coughs> should use this joint set of frequencies. They should not be using the same frequency as against the rule of uh, reuse distance and all. And the dis dissimilar frequency since uh, the frequency of the uh, nearby channels are not same, they are dissimilar. So this will call for negotiation between the mobile terminal of the present base station and the next potential base station. Now the handoff decision, the handoff decision can be centralized or it can be decentralized and it can be controlled by uh, network uh, or it can be controlled by say the mobile, it can be assisted, partly assisted that is partly controlled or it can be fully controlled. Okay. Now what is network controlled handoff? It is a centralized decision making obviously because whenever network is uh, into the picture it means there is an administration, the network administration is looking into all the centralized uh, decision making activities. So decision making process is very very central and each base station collects the signal measurement of all the mobile stations and it calculates to which uh, base station, uh, the neighboring base station, uh, the mobile station, the mobile uh, object is uh, likely to receive the best signal strength. Then if it finds a better one, it will hand it over to the next cell. Now the next, uh, the network admin administrator aggregates the measurement of all the, all such mobile terminals that comes under its coverage. Now handoff process time in this case is uh, 100 to 200 ms. The process time is basically what? It is the duration uh, between the handoff decision and execution. The handoff gets uh, detected and it started, starts to get uh, executed. Once it starts to get uh, executed, the duration from that point of time and it executes uh, successfully. This particular period is known as our uh, the handoff process time. Okay. So some of the stations that uh, use uh, this type of uh, handoff decision is generally the first generation analog systems, uh, AMPS and TCAS. Uh, these are some of the examples. Now what happens in mobile assisted handoff? Mobile assisted means now the mobile terminal, it transmits its signal. So obviously it, it can uh, keep a track of the measurement uh, better than the network administration because the network administration has to wait for the mobile terminal signal to come and capture and then record and analyze. But it is best for uh, the mobile uh, user, the device to uh, get a better record of its own signal strength. 
Now, once it has its details, what it can do is uh, it will help the network to use this information for deciding whether a handoff process should take place or not and if it takes place what type of allocation of channels is required or some um, uh, allotted already allotted channel needs to be re released or not etc and such process uh, approximately takes uh, one second the next is mobile controlled handoff in mobile controlled handoff what happens uh, now, the mobiles are not partly associated in the uh, handoff decision, they are completely in charge. So, now each mobile station or mobile terminal uh, is completely in control of the handoff process and the mobile uh, station collects the signal strength, it calculates the signal strength of the other potential base stations in its neighborhood, in its closed, uh, close uh, proximity. And then it calculates the RSS that is the relative signal strength and decides whether uh, on the basis of the rate of uh, its movement or the type of resources it has whether it should do a handoff or not. So from this lecture uh, we can make out that uh, what are the handoff strategies, what handoff is, uh, how it uh, impacts the quality of service. Uh, on multimedia applications and the loss performance, the error uh, tolerancy, uh, the channel uh, assignment, reassignment, allocation is uh, uh, it should be static or dynamic etc. So, we have to be uh, take these issues into consideration the network administration or it might be the mobile device. Thank you. With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much. And dear friends, uh, if you have uh, any queries or if you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then you can mail us at info.cc at the written We would be meeting again very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much.